Greetings. I'm Professor Hobo, and welcome to another Hobo Tech Dose product review. Today's product is the highly anticipated Blue Eddy AC50S model, which is an upgrade from the AC50 model that I reviewed last year. One of my biggest gripes about the original model was the lack of regulated 12 volt output, which has been resolved in this new version. The AC50S also sports faster MPPT charging, a pure sign inverter, power delivery and wireless charging, and sports a 1000 cycle lithium ion battery. Is this finally the holy grail of mid-range portable power stations? Let's find out. So what comes in the box? Of course you get the 90 watt AC wall charger, the 12 volt, 24 volt cigarette lighter, input, an MC4 to eight millimeter input cable. That's for solar, obviously. And they give you a USB-C cable so that you can charge your USB-C devices. And of course, they give you the manual and warranty. Now, there's nothing really special here in this book. Those of you who always ask, how many hours can you run whatever? Here are some examples and they give you a nice little uh, formula that you can work out to give you the approximate hours that your devices will run. And here is the specifications page for those of you interested. And the book also includes troubleshooting codes. So if you overvolt, undervolt or whatever, it comes up with a special code on the display to tell you what's going on. What is the depth of discharge? It says 90%, so that means they do set aside 10% of the battery capacity to avoid damage to the battery. So what's inside the AC50S? It sports a 500 watt hour automotive grade LG brand lithium ion battery rated at 1,000 cycles to 80%. That means you can charge and discharge this 1,000 times before you lose the top 20% of the battery. This is not like lead acid where after 500 cycles you just have to throw the battery away. This will be good for many, many years. That 1,000 cycles is just gonna consume that top 20% of the battery capacity. Size and weight. This is approximately 12 by eight by eight at 13.6 pounds. As for the build quality, it's pretty much all ABS plastic. It does have this silicone surround, which can be pulled off and changed if you don't like the color, and they do have multiple colors available. And it does have these sort of rubber feet. As for the display, this does offer the typical display you'll find in a lot of Blue Eddy products. It has the five segment battery icon that shows you the level of the battery. And it also gives you power meters for input and output wattage. The meters also double as error displays. So if you go over under temperature or voltage or wattage or anything like that, these actually will show up error codes, which you can look up in the book. As for the inverter, this is a 300 watt pure sign inverter with a 450 watt peak, and they offer two outlets. The Blue Eddy sports three different ways to charge. The first is by 90 watt wall adapter. Now this is for AC power. You can plug this into your wall or a generator. And since this is a 90 watt adapter, it'll charge in approximately six hours. Now Blue Eddy claims this is two different ways to charge but I consider charging from AC power, no matter what the source, as one way to charge. The second way to charge is from 12 or 24 volt vehicle. Now this adapter is a cigarette lighter that plugs into your vehicle, and on the other side is an eight millimeter adapter that plugs into the back of the Blue Eddy. Now for 12 volt vehicles, you can charge in somewhere around seven hours, and for 24 volt vehicles, you can charge in under four hours. The third and final way to charge is via solar using the included MC4 to eight millimeter adapter. Now this is important because this allows you to use virtually any third party panel to charge the Blue Eddy. And you can actually put up to two panels in series and charge this thing in under four hours as long as you can get the input wattage at least 120 watts. As for USB charging, you have four standard USB-A 5 volt 3 amp ports. These are not quick charge ports. And one 45 watt power delivery port. As for other outputs, you do actually have a wireless charging pad on the top that's good for charging at 10 watts. And for 12 volt outputs, you have the standard cigarette lighter output, of course. And then you have these two unregulated 3 amp 5.5 millimeter outputs that you can use for small loads like lights. Now what SoGen would be complete 
without some kind of light. Now, the Blue Eddy AC50S actually has a spectacular lantern light that has high, low, and SOS. I find this way more handy than a one watt flashlight that shines out a little beam on the wall. This can actually light up a small room or a tent or the back of your vehicle in really dark conditions. I've used this many times over other power stations because this might not look that bright on camera, but trust me, it's actually quite bright. And maybe one of the best features of this light, you can use it to signal for help. And as for the warranty, Luetti offers a two-year limited manufacturer's warranty on all their products. And of course, I took the AC50S into my secret laboratory where I performed all kinds of very crazy experiments on it. Battery capacity test. AC 50S final result, 436 watt hours, 34 amp hours, total discharge time, four hours, 11 minutes. So you can see the results are 436 watt hours out of 500 watt hours or a respectable 87%. This result's pretty consistent with Blue Eddy products. Now do recall, they do reserve 10% of the battery, so it keeps it from getting damaged by over discharging. So you're really losing very little to the regulated output, only 3%. This next test is the DC output rate check. This measures how much power we can get out of the 12 volt cigarette lighter part. Now the regulation voltage in the Blue 80 AC50S is 13.6 volts, which is perfect. That's the same voltage you get out of most running vehicles. We're starting at 13.6 volts. We're gonna go ahead and turn up the amps. Now we know since this is rated at 10 amps, it can handle 10 amps. So there's our baseline, 10 amps, 130 volts. So let's go ahead and take it up from there. We have 11 amp, oh, well, I guess that's it. And since we overloaded the 12 volt, we get an error 26. So let's turn it off and back on again. Hello IT, have you tried turning it off and on again? Now let's do something I don't think I did on my initial test of the AC50 brand product. And that is test the three amp outputs. It does say 12 volts, three amps. And I just plugged it in. Note that the battery is about 50% charged. And the voltage is interesting, 10.9. That means that these two 5.5 millimeter outputs are not regulated. So you're getting the battery voltage here, not the same kind of power you would get out of the 12 volt socket. So make note of that if you're gonna use these three amp outputs, they are not regulated. So let's see how many amps we can actually pull out of the 12 volt port before it shuts down. Now notice a big difference in the voltage when you're not using a regulated output. The voltage has dropped significantly. It is down to 9.7 volts. And remember the battery is only at 50%. So let's see, we're at three amps, 29 watts. How far can we push it before it shuts down? Four, five. So we're actually pulling almost 50 watts out of the port. Now notice the voltage is all the way down to nine volts. That is crazy, six amps. So now we're pulling about 54 watts. We're at seven amps. We're pulling 62 watts and it finally conked out at seven amps. Seven amps out of a three amp port. I have to say that's a success. Uh, I expected maybe four or five amps out of this, but it didn't shut down so it pulled a whopping seven amps. Now do note that the voltage drops pretty hard once you start getting up into those high numbers but it's still usable if you don't need regulated 12 volt in those two ports. Pure sine wave check under load. As you can see here, we have a pure sine wave and the numbers on here look pretty good. So let's test under low. We're gonna use this hair dryer, which is about as dirty as you get. So if the sine wave still stays pure by using a hair dryer, which both has a resistive load and a motor in it, it'll pass the test. So watch those numbers. That top corner number is the voltage. Watch when I apply a load. 
Do you see how it responds? Now on the highest quality inverters, that voltage and that hertz will barely change. It might change by a volt or two, but that's it. You saw this is practically unfazed by the hair dryer. That's showing that this uses high quality components in this inverter. You can see no problems with the inverter on this. In fact, it's one of the most stable inverters I've ever seen on a portable power station. Now for this next test, we're gonna test the inverter load on this. We're gonna see how does the AC50S inverter handle an excessive load? Now instead of using a hair dryer or the solar degenerator, which could possibly damage the inverter in this, I'm gonna do this test first, just in case I do blow it up on the second test. And now this test may break the space-time continuum because we're actually using one blue eddy to charge another blue eddy. So we got the EB150 here. This is the first blue eddy product I ever had. And this thing is pretty old at this point, probably a year and a half maybe at this point. Still holding up just fine. Still use it pretty regularly for stuff. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the output of the inverter on the little blue eddy. We're gonna run it through my variable voltage charger, which is gonna allow me to dial in the number of watts that come out of the little blue eddy. And we're sending it through this cable to the big blue eddy. So the inverter on this is rated at 300 watts pure sign. It stopped right away. We didn't make it past 300 watts at all. You know that's not the end of the story. Yep, it's that time. Solar degenerator. I hope it doesn't blow this thing up because I really like this product. But let's find out if you can handle 300 watts of the heat gun. All right, here goes nothing. There we go, we're at 300, 350. 400, we're at 400 watts out of a 300 watt inverter. I don't know guys. It still smells okay. I guess we can try one more. I kind of want to see where it shuts down, but I also don't want to burn it up. I still got other tests to do. So let's hope that the Blue Eddy inverter is strong enough that it won't self-destruct. I'm going to go ahead and try this again. I'm going to push it until it shuts off. All right, 400, it errors out, and I don't think we damaged it, that's good. So you can pull up to 450 watt surge or 400 watts for a few seconds, but it's pretty much standard that you're not gonna be able to pull more than 300 watts out of this for any length of time. Of course, I know I gotta cover it, or I'm gonna have 47 people ask me, does the AC50S support pass-through charging? In other words, can you charge it while you use the outputs? Well, I don't know of a Blue Eddy that doesn't support it, Let's prove it. We currently have 122 watts coming in from the AC well charger. So let's turn it on. That's the USB beeper. There's your 12 volt voltage. And what about AC? And there you go. There's your answer. It absolutely supports both AC and DC pass through charging. This next test is the max charge rate test. What this will tell us is what does it take to charge this thing? I'm gonna use this variable voltage charger. We're gonna start at 12 volts, which is a typical lead acid battery voltage. And we're gonna go ahead and crank it up until it stops charging. And we're gonna check here and see how many watts do we get depending on what the voltage is. So this is gonna tell us what voltage we're putting into it. And then this meter here is gonna tell us how many watts are going in. And surprisingly, at the base 12 volts, it's taking a whopping 100 watts. That's actually pretty impressive. That's about eight amps. So it would pretty much max out the power on your cigarette lighter port on your vehicle without blowing the fuse, of course. So let's keep turning up the voltage. Let's go up to fully charged lead acid battery voltage, which is around somewhere around 13.6, 13.8. There we go. And the power goes up slightly to 115 watts. Let's take out the 14.4, 14.6 as a fully charged lead acid battery, 120 watts. Let's take it up to base solar panel voltage. A 12 volt solar panel typically puts out anywhere from 18 to 22 volts. Looks like here we don't have any change in the results at 18 volts. Let's take it up to max VOC, maximum solar panel voltage from a single solar panel. 122 watts really hasn't changed. Let's take it up to 25 volts. Still no change. 26, 27, 28, 30, 35. How high can we go? 
38, 40. We're at 45 volts and we finally error out. 45 volts. That is two solar panels in series. There we go. So the upper limit on this is a whopping 45 volts. Obviously the max charge rate is 122 watts, no matter how many volts you put into it. But since it has an upper limit of somewhere around 44, 45 volts before it errors out, you could put two 12 volt solar panels in series to charge this. So say you have two 100 watt solar panels laying around, put them in series, plug them into this, and they should work most of the time. Now, does that mean you can't charge this with a 100 or 120 watt panel? Of course you can, that's what it's designed for. But I know some of you are gonna ask, you're gonna push the limit, you're gonna ask me, can you put more than one solar panel on it? And the answer is, it looks like yes. So you can see the results are pretty impressive. 122 watts, you can charge this thing anywhere from about 14 to 45 volts. That allows you a lot of leeway in choosing a solar panel configuration. For example, you can plug a single 200 watt solar panel into this and charge it at that 122 watt rate, or you can put two 100 watt solar panels in series and charge it at that 122 watt rate. Now this is pretty rare for a power station this size. Usually only the larger power stations allow you to hook up multiple panels in series, but you know, seeing this is a mid-range size, being able to hook up two solar panels, this is pretty cool. So I'm currently running from the 45 watt power delivery port on the Blue 80 AC50S, and I'm running it at 20 volts, two and a half amps. We're pulling over 45 watts. Now, unfortunately, the AC50S does not have any quick charge ports, and that little blinking blue light means confirmed. These are not voltage adjustable USB ports. So these four bottom USB ports that are on the DC out do not support quick charging. They're just basic five volt, three amp ports. So is the battery in the AC50S user replaceable? No, it's not. Can the AC50S be parallel with other AC50Ss to provide more power? No, it cannot. Then again, you can't expect these kinds of features on a low priced model. If you want modular batteries, you're gonna pay dearly for it. You can go to EcoFlow for that. So what do I like about the new and improved Blue Eddy AC50S? Well, practically everything, from the thousand cycle battery to the design, the fact it has regulated 12 volt output now, fast MPPT charging, a high quality pure sine wave inverter, power delivery and wireless charging. It's also a good size and weight, very portable and easily storable with the folding handle. And then they include the very useful lantern light on the back, way better than those silly little one watt flashlights on the competitors. The fact you can charge it with two solar panels puts it ahead of the competition. It's really one of the most well-rounded mid-range Sojans available on the market. And what is a Sojan? It's a solar, solar generator. generator. Now what don't I like about this unit? Well, it's really a stretch to find anything I really don't like. However, the biggest gripe I do have is the lack of USB quick charge ports on this. Now this can be remedied several ways. They do sell 12 volt to quick charge adapters, which you know most people put those in their cars if they wanna charge their MacBook or a high-end cell phone that requires quick charge ability. You can plug that right in here to the 12 volt port and probably give you at least two quick charge ports. The other method is just to use the adapter that came with your phone or your tablet or whatever and put that into the AC inverter. Now, that's not very efficient to charge a cell phone or a tablet from the AC inverter because the inverter wastes a lot of power. So you're just better off getting one of those 12 volt adapters that'll provide you some quick charge ports. Now, Blue Eddy is aware of this and they are going to include quick charge ports on their future products. Now, if you're looking for one of those 12 volt to quick charge port adapters, I do have them available on hobotech.tv slash Amazon. Now there's one and only one reason somebody would buy a Jackery Explorer 500 over one of these. And that's gonna be because of the inverter. The inverter in this is absolutely fantastic. As you saw in our tests, the sine wave is pure, it doesn't budge under load, and it puts out perfect 120 volts at 60 hertz. However, it's only rated at 300 watts versus the Jackery's 500 watts. Now 300 watts is still gonna be plenty for most. You can still use it to charge a laptop, run a mini PC, TVs, fans, electric blankets, game consoles. Uh, you won't be able to run most electric cooktops or induction cookers even at the lowest settings. 
And of course, you can forget about running a residential refrigerator or freezer or a microwave or an air conditioner on one of these. In fact, that's not even recommended for the Jackery Explorer 500. Now, this isn't really the end of the world anyway, because even if you were able to run a lot of those things, you wouldn't be able to run them for very long off of a 500 watt hour battery. Instead, if you want to run things like microwaves and refrigerators and induction cookers and instant pots, you should be looking at the big brother to this one, the EB150 or EB240, which are the 1500 and 2400 watt hour power stations. I got some pretty deep discounts on those available right now. If you're looking for something much larger, they're just as good a quality as this and a much larger size. Product price, the AC50S retails for $429, which is still 70 bucks cheaper than the Jackery 500. However, exclusively on Hobotech for a limited time, you can get 50 bucks off as of this recording by using the link and the code in the description below. That's 379 bucks for this on the Blue Eddy store page and probably no tax if you're outside of California. Now, if you prefer Amazon, it is finally for sale there on Amazon. It's gonna cost you more. There's currently, as of today, a $30 off coupon, which brings the price down to $3.99. And in most states, you're gonna end up paying sales tax because, of course, Amazon is on their world conquest. So if you're not in a hurry, go ahead and buy it at the Blue Eddy store. You'll save a lot of money that way. But if you are in a hurry, it is for sale on Amazon right now. It's gonna cost you a little bit more and it does include a $30 coupon on the Amazon page. There is no special discount for Hobotech on Amazon. Even without the discounts in play, 429 bucks for this is really good bang for the buck when you consider how much the competition charges like Jackery and EcoFlow. So what's the main competition for the AC50S? Well, it strikes right into the heart of Jackery and EcoFlow as their products generally don't offer as much and cost more. The Jackery 500, for example, is way behind the game in technology and even during the best sales, they still want 449 bucks for it. The new River 600 from EcoFlow offers a better inverter and a lot faster charging but an extreme cost of battery life. The battery life in that is way less than this, so it's basically gonna be useless a lot earlier in its life than this would be. And they want 599 bucks for their 576 watt hour version. You could almost buy two of these for the price of one of those River 600s. So who is this product aimed at? Well, it's aimed at virtually anybody who's in the market for a mid-range Sogen that covers pretty much all the bases. Now, this doesn't have quick charge, but that's easily resolved. But if you think about it, this does have just about anything anybody could want in a power station of this size. Yes, there are some that charge faster and have larger inverters, but they're also significantly more expensive. This is for the kind of person who's looking for the best bang for the buck in something this size. What about recommended solar panels for this product? Well, since it can support up to 45 volts, that means you can run one or two solar panels in series on this and charge it at its max rate of 122 watts. That does give you some flexibility. You can run a pair of 100 watt solar panels from Jackery, Rock Pals, Suoki, Paxess, and even that dirt cheap All Powers panel. Um, you could also connect a single larger panel like a Renogy or Sun Gold Power suitcase. Um, now, in those cases, you're gonna have to bypass the controller, and I do have a video that shows you how to bypass a solar controller on a suitcase kit so you can use it with a power station. And if you prefer, you can also just connect large rigid glass solar panels to this. Uh, for example, the Bouge RV 180 watt panels or 200 watt panels that they just came out with would be suited perfectly fine to this. I do have some really steep discounts available for those Bouge RV rigid glass panels. If you go to hobotech.tv slash Amazon, click on solar kits, it takes you down to the solar section where you can see all the special offers I got going on there for solar. And if you are interested in the Blue Eddy AC50S, there are two links in the description below. One for the $379 offer at Blue Eddy and one for the $399 offer at Amazon. Remember these prices are for a limited time. So if you see this video in a week, month or year later, don't expect those deals to still be around. And be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on deals like this in the future. Thanks for watching. If you learned something today, don't forget to give me a thumbs up below. And if you're not a subscriber already, 
you know what to do. That's it for now. Till next time. Odin commands you to like and subscribe and clean my litter box. So who's the AC-50 ass aimed at? And yes, that's rain that you're hearing in the background. It's pretty loud. Yep, I figured out exactly how to make it rain and snow here on the homestead. Just record a video. RV Golf Guy, Z Foxfire, Jab Smith.